We're out here in the Rio Rancho, New Mexico, riding with the side-by-side -side group, the New Mexico Forum on Facebook, New Mexico side-by-side -side group. Great bunch of guys invited me to go riding. I think I'm in for a heck of a ride today. Stay tuned. Vidras from Albuquerque, New Mexico, showing Guy the best place to ride in New Mexico. <laughs> and you're the admin of? Admin of uh, New Mexico Side by Side, one of the oldest ones in New Mexico. Yeah, man, if you, don't, if you haven't had a chance, sign up. He'll admit you, right? You'd yeah, we'll get you signed up. New Mexico Side by Side, great guys. And on my, the terrain, I, this is amazing.
Where are we, man? The Ridgeline Trail. Awesome. In the greater Rio Puerco Valley. Wow. Good riding today, boys. Alright, the crew from New Mexico side by side coming at you. There's a dinosaur up there, that's cool. Everybody thinks it's a dinosaur. Why, what do you think it is? Dog? It's gonna be like a fucking horse or a... Where? That's a dinosaur. It's broken down because it's a Polaris. Yep, it's a Polaris. <laughs> broken down. Okay, so how to find the Eureka Copper Mine and the Eureka Mesa. A uh, quick little ride that we did up in the mountains here. It was gorgeous. So here's Cuba, New Mexico. This is 126 right here. Uh, ended up parking at this little campground right here. $5 a day, you know, all the way up until midnight, I think. It was worth it. Uh, Rio de la Vacas campground. All right, and then from there, basically went back up 126. I myself went up through, there's this little deer lake, you can just about see this uh, community. You go in through here, you go past this pond, swamp, stay right, and then you'll go all the way up here to this is, is an intersection, you just take a left. And it's a fairly rugged trail.
I mean, it's, it's kind of narrow. I got a 64 inch, um, but it's not, you know, well maintained and it's fine. You'll go slow, no big deal. And then the mines are right up here. The trail kind of ends. It looks like a T and you kind of got to look out and take this left here. And then this is kind of the mountain. You can see this is the, the big hill on the topography map. Here is the coordinates of the mines, but you really can't miss it. And then it's really a one-way deal. He came back, and um, instead of going through back through Deer Lake, I went straight, and there's a gate here, and this gate could be opened and closed. And um, what we ended up doing is to make a day out of it. Because this is only like, I'm just going to guess, not even four miles. But this was really cool, doing this ride up here. Going to the Mesa. That's where all the big antennas are. And it's pretty, it's a flat top. And you get some good views. But basically, you go back here and you take your first left. And you'll go up. I think it's 70. It's actually marked. And um, that was cool. But my most favorite part of the day, other than going into the mines, was going back here. We took 70. Now, this is a really improved dirt road. You know, it's, it's nice views and everything, but it's just really easy riding. But what I really enjoyed was going up here and taking this right. This goes all the way down the mountain through the woods. And this is not a well-improved trail. And by any means, it's not rough or anything, but it's grass and, and dirt. And uh, you felt like you were going through the wilderness on a mountain. And that was fun. Nice, light, easy ride. And uh, But it wasn't just an improved trail. And then uh, got back here. You could actually park maybe one or two trailers right here as well. I didn't see that until I came back out here. There's a gate here that you can open and close as well. So uh, don't be alarmed if you see the gate. And we went July uh, 2022. And then literally we're less than a mile back to the campground. Hope this helps. It was beautiful up in the mountains. You know, you're up over 8,000, 9,000 feet, some of these areas. And uh, a lot different than riding in the uh, high desert. So it was a great day.